Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Princess Evangel W Happiness. My eyes jarred open. Ah, uh, morning already? I had been practicing in my dreams all night and felt like I hadn't gotten much sleep. After putting my futon away in the closet, I fell deep into thought. In my dream, what I witnessed yesterday, Onomi Chan's movements repeatedly played out before me. I felt like I nearly caught on to something. I suddenly remembered something I had heard somewhere once before. Some chemist had come up with a hint to some sort of chemical formula in his dreams. He must have contemplated those thoughts so much that they ended up influencing even his dreams. It would be great if the same thing had happened to me as well. What isn't that? Uh, I think I know what this. I think I know what this is. I don't remember, like what the person's name was or what he came up with. I, I think he was on the bus or something. He fell asleep and then he had a dream about adding carbon to a chemical formula and it made something incredible. Super duper incredible. I think that's what he's talking about. Oh, she's back. She's back with her vengeance. Oh, what if we win now? <gasps> That would be insane. Oh, we're gonna win now, guys. We we just had that uh, epiphany in our dream. My gloomy mood accumulated inside me all throughout sparring practice. <laughs> I stepped backward and dodged a pointed strike. I can tell, just as I thought, I can tell somehow. I had intu I had in intuitively. I've never seen that word before. Or use that way. Caught on to when she was about to strike me. During our sparring matches, I could tell she wasn't aiming to score with every single strike. She showered you with strikes that you might scatter bird seed, and once her opponent was thrown off balance, she launched a vigorous strike. Given the difference in our skill levels, this was similar to a chess puzzle where I was steadily being forced into checkmate. Regardless, My hands moved subconsciously and I caught the strike to my leg with my blade. <gasps> oh, she's so surprised. Uh-oh. Will we win this? And then she she might she might commit Sudoku. Don't do that. Oh no. How was I able to stave her off like this? I've got it. Ow, ow, ow. I took a clean blow to the head when I dropped my guard, getting struck with more pain than usual. Ow, ow, I, I figured it out. The pattern to your attacks. I removed my mask and explained what I had noticed. Everyone from the club also gathered around. The pattern to Konomi-sama's strikes. What could it be? I wonder if he was able to counter her attacks because he figured that out. When you're about to launch a decisive strike, I picked up my Naginata and demonstrated. You always lower the hand close to the hilt for a second. The elbow goes like this too, it's a set of movements so I'm sure anyone missed it unless they were specifically looking out for it. But if you do take notice of it, you can tell that ended up tri tipping me off. This seems similar to a baseball pitcher's tells to me. Any differences in how they swing their arm before pitching a straight or curveball would be a huge hint for the batter. That's... How I was able to defend myself. <laughs> Onomi Chan's eyes went wide and she fell silent. Is that true? It couldn't be. I could hear their loud musings all around me. I'm sure any of you would have noticed it if you had sparred with her one-on-one. -on -one. After I said that, Kakuno Chan took a step forward. No, it is likely you know because of who you are, Masaya sama Although we have not been sparring, we have practiced together nearly every day for the last two and a half years. Even I failed to notice it. Nomi-chan, did you notice your own toe? Yeah. He feebly shook her head. Oh, 
Yami-chan. Hooray! Yeah. That was exactly the sort of answer I knew she'd give. Alright. Yeah, do your best. Want to have lunch first? So, so this <laughs> Dad got a little overzealous with practice. What are we gonna make? What are we gonna make? Today's menu is <gasps> oh let me let me guess. Uh uh not pizza. Uh uh a beef stew? Uh, no, beef with rice or a beef beef with something with beef? I'm gonna say beef. Bok choy and fried sable fish miso with radish and scallop mayonnaise salad. I was not even close. My dishes were pretty popular and it made me happy that everyone else enjoyed them, so I'd gotten kind of fanatical about it. It's ready! Just like before, everyone crowded around, I reached the lakeside and Konomi-chan glared at me. Wow, I'm very impressed. Huh? If Konomi-sama wins the championship thanks to this, you will have done us a great service, Masaya-sama. Oh, you're exaggerating. It really depends on how much effort she puts in herself. Oh, but... I gently sidestepped her and kept moving forward. Ah. Uh... Konomi-chan was annoyed again. Yep, there she is, annoyed as ever. It probably wasn't because she was bothered by what Yumi-chan had said. Konomi-chan wasn't like that. Which laughed. I said this half to myself as I prepared the meal. Let's focus our minds on our matches for now. <gasps> After that, the truly intensive training began. She used a training dummy at first, but decided that wouldn't help her get her feel for it, so I acted as her practice partner from then on. This method would determine whether or not she was able to overcome her toe. Okay. Given my skill level, she should be able to score a point on me easily, no matter how hard I focus on defense. What the heck, the next day already? Holy moly, we're just going through each day and day. The eve of the tournament had come. We would be leaving early tomorrow morning, so the plan was to descend the mountain by the evening at the latest. However, we continued practicing even after the sun had set. <laughs> Onomi chan, if you overexert yourself, it will affect you tomorrow. And then we just sit by and watch her classmate Kukuno chan spoke up. But Konomi chan just shook her head. <laughs> Bruno Chan backed down in silence. I decided I would cut her off in the end. Only the sound of both our breathing could be heard in the dojo. And Omi Chan had all but begged everyone to leave ahead of us. This is the end, huh? I squinted from the sweat pouring from my forehead. I was reaching my upper limit, so that probably applied even more so to Konomi-chan, who had been enthusiastically striking at me. Yeah! No! I hadn't reacted to the blow, but and it definitely wasn't due to exhaustion. But Konomi-chan? All the strength left her hands and she let her Naginata fell. She subsequently sat weakly on the floor and looked up at me. Yes? You did it. I'm sure you'll win now. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's crying! Oh! Anomi chan rubbed the corners of her eyes. 
私必ず勝ちます勝って勝ってご報告を Me? Yeah I squeezed her hand tightly It occurred to me that this was a bold move on my part but at this moment I had no doubts And the same went for Konomi-chan <laughs> She squeezed my hand back and then gave me a mighty nod Um, not good. Can't sleep. I was totally worked up. But I guess it's only natural I'd be excited. I helped Konomi Chan and she was able to overcome her weakness. She now had her sights on taking the championship at tomorrow's tournament. At the very end of our sparring practice, we held hands and had a very nice mood going. If this wasn't enough to get me excited, then what could? Konomi Chan was so cute earlier. What happened? Why, why is she so... What, what? Her face was bright red as she rushed off. To me, Konomi-chan was unusually pure for a modern girl in various ways. She had, she had a one-track mind. She instantly blushed at everything. I would wonder if she was mad only to find her smiling the next moment. She was completely straightforward and honest in everything she did. It's... kind of strange. Of course, I would be excited, but at some point along the way, Konomi-chan was always on my mind. And that made it harder and harder for me to fall asleep. I sat up right in the darkness. I wonder if Konomi-chan is out by the lake. I was as dead tired as you'd expect, so I stayed there tonight and would go back to the dorms early tomorrow morning. May not have been able to sleep either, even if she was worn out. If she was by the lake, I wanted to talk to her for a little bit. Hmm? Hearing the sound of water startled me enough to send my heart leaping into my throat. What in the world were these suspicious splashing sounds? <gasps> they are Pantaberu! Only Konomi-chan and myself would be here at Mount Amuro right now. I hid myself in the trees and timidly pushed ahead. Konomi-chan was pouring water on herself dressed in a single garment of underwear. <laughs> what? Eh... Is she going to be alright after doing that? What I felt first was concern for her health. It was quite cold in the mountains at night to the point you'd be fr you'd freeze if you got wet. Turn most tomorrow, Konomi-chan would be putting herself at a huge disadvantage if she caught a cold now. So she's naked at the at the um at the lake with just her underwear. Though it wasn't like she was foolish, she must have been aware of that and was going doing so anyway. Hmm? She was whispering something. The whole area was quiet aside from the echoes from the water. I could probably make it out if I listened closely. Konomi-chan was probably performing an act referred to as cold water ab ablution. Getting the religious connotations aside, she was doing it in order to clear her mind. Having such an important tournament close at hand only served to disrupt her concentration all the more. Either way, it was painful for me to watch her lean, petite frame shaking so hard. Wait... Was this peeping? She was practically half naked. This was a total crime. I quietly backed away, careful not to make any noise. Ah! My whole body froze in place. I was stiff as a board, predicting I would suffer a crushing blow from behind any second. Contrary to my expectations, I heard the sound of water again from the same location. Oh. You didn't see me? I was incredibly relieved and left for sure this time. Woo! Huh? The question suddenly occurred to me as I made it back to the entryway. Why did you say my name then? Well, whatever. <sighs> Something told me it was important, but unfortunately, I was so tired that my brain wasn't functioning. A big numb nut. It's about time I got some sleep. After laying my hand on the door, I turned back. I sure hope she doesn't push us up too hard. Huh.
I'm gonna end the episode here, everybody. Seems like she was skinny dipping. Mm -hmm. Well, a, a, a blue shin. Something, I have no idea. But it's, it's skinny dipping and, you know, it, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Bye!